All right, welcome back to another Ready Player Me tutorial in Unity. And um, at the end of the last video, I mentioned how we need to do something clever when it comes to turning around, because otherwise our arms and hands will get jacked up whenever we turn around in the real world. So I'm gonna get a bit quiet as I move from my mic, but watch what happens to my character. So look up in my window up at the top whenever I spin around, all right? So here I am, even doing this, my arms have already moved so far back that it's already confused. Um, because my character is not actually uh, moving forward. <laughs> That's something else we'll set up later. Um, but like if I spin around, look what happened to the arms. The arms got like all twisted and it's not realistic and the joints in the arms are, the shoulders are basically spun around 360. Um, I also just noticed though that without me doing anything, the lip syncing that's built into Ready Player Me is already working. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's take a look at what we need to do for whenever we turn around in the world wor real world to make sure that our character also turns. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, so at this point, I don't think we've done any real logic. Um, if you've never watched my channel before, I use Playmaker Visual Scripting for like 80 to 95% of what I do. So um, when I demo this, I'm gonna be using Playmaker Visual Scripting, but if anything, that should even make it easier for you to do it in code because you can visually see what's happening and then you can just use the correct C -sharp, Sharp coding to do what I'm about to do with Visual Scripting. All right, so um, I actually gotta get my Playmaker Editor um, apparently it's not installed, so let me pause and install real quick. All right, should be installed now. All right, get my nice little pretty editor. Um, well, uh, normally I drop it down here. Why don't you dock, dock? All right, so we're just going to put a little piece of logic on uh, my player. Um, eventually, we're going to be setting this up for multiplayer, but right now I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so what we need to do is we need to detect when our camera rotates so far around that it doesn't really make sense physically for um, our toes to still be facing forward. All right, um, how do I still look? Am I still on camera? Do I look nice? All right, I'm still on camera. All right, OBS looks good. All right, um, so what we need to do first is get rotation of our camera. Um, so we have this little actions panel that I use in Playmaker that's got all these little mini scripts. So I'm gonna get rotation. Let's drop this in here. And I wanna get the rotation of the XR camera, which is just this main camera here. So let's specify. I'm gonna have a lot of coughing in this video and I apologize ahead of time because I'm, I'm coughing a lot right now today. Um, and then we need to store, we really only care about the Y rotation, so we're not gonna worry about X and Z. So let's just store um, this as camera rotation. And we're gonna do it every frame and I'm gonna do it world space, all right? Um, and then I also wanna get rotation. I'll just copy and paste that. And um, <clears throat> I mean, I could put like another object that's like a children of the feet, but I'm just gonna pick one of the toes. Um, so I'm just gonna search toe. And there we go, right toe end. So if we look, whoa. Slow down, right click, scroll wheel, slows down that zoom if you didn't know. All right, so you can see it's right at the toe there. That's gonna work for me. Um, so we still have that right toe selected. Oh, wait a minute. I should have locked my FSM here. All right, there's my right toe end. So I'm gonna get the rotation of this right toe end and um, keep do the y angle, y angle on this and I'm gonna call this foot rotation. That's probably never gonna change, but that's just what we're gonna use to base um, our angle off of that we're about to create. All right, so done that, done that. So now we're going to get the delta angle as a float. So that's basically the change in the angle, I guess. I think that's what it is. Um, but float delta angle is the playmaker action I'm using. Um, and we're going to get the from angle, which is the camera rotation, to the foot rotation. And we're gonna store this, I'm just gonna store, I mean, I can store it as delta rotation, I'm just gonna store it as delta, and we're gonna be checking this every frame. All right, and then I'm going to set animator float, and um, I need to specify the game object because the game object with our animator is actually our RPM avatar. Do we have two? I thought I saw it twice. This is our RPM avatar. And we don't have a parameter yet, um, so let's go add one. So I'm just gonna go window, um, 
animation animator so if we put this down here and we actually click on our avatar we got this we don't have any parameters in here yet so we're just going to add one um, we're just going to call this HMD rotation and then go back to my logic here and so um, this parameter we're setting is the HMD rotation and we're just going to set it to the delta and we're going to do this every frame all right, so I'm gonna to go to my animator. And this doesn't have like a real, this isn't gonna be the animator that we're gonna use, that we're seeing here, um, but I'm gonna set this up. All right, so, um, we have this talking animation. We're probably just going to not mess with the, uh, the walking animation right now. So this is just the default animator that came with this. So I'm gonna turn off the exit times on this. And in fact, I think I'll just, uh, can I delete the, yeah, I'll just delete those transitions. All right, so from here, I'm going to create a state empty and I'm just gonna call this uh, a right turn. And um, so this won't be too crazy different than what'll happen when I actually set up the animator for this. This is gonna be like our, uh, our blend tree for our movement. Um, and then these will be rotations, but it's actually going to be in its own uh, layer anyways. So really this shouldn't be in the base layer. Let's let's undo, 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 undo. I forgot about that. Undo, undo, undo. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's create a new layer actually. <clears throat> and we're just going to call this our turning layer. And uh, the settings wise, just leave it by default. And so actually... Let me check my settings. Um, this is an override blend. I think we should be all good. I'm not using any masks. Weight should be set to one. It likes to set itself to zero by default. So make sure it's the weight set to one. And then um, what do I have on my other one? Nothing going on. All right, so we need a, um, we have to have a base state. All right, so we're just gonna create an empty to start as the, the start state. It's empty, nothing's gonna be in here. <clears throat> And then I will create now the uh, the right turn. All right, and then I will create the left turn. All right, and then we're gonna have a transition from here to there, and from there to there, and from here to here, and from here to there. Just right clicking and, and uh, clicking to each one. I don't want any of them to have exit times, so undo that. Undo that. I actually kind of wish has exit time was not on by default, but that's just me. All right. All right. So let's turn off. I still have some exit times here for some reason. There we go. Now I got them all off. All right. And um, what we need now is we need to know when we're transitioning. So we're going to go from the, the non-existent state we'll just call this empty state, um, to right turn whenever our HMD rotation is less than minus 44. So I basically just figured this out by putting on the headset and um, checking my logic. This is one of the benefits of Playmaker is you can see your variable values. I mean, you can do a public or a serialized view and see sharp too and see it. So I just put my headset on and when I turned right, I just checked to see what my delta was. And so that was, and then I figured out my target goal for that. So for me, and probably for you, since we're all using the same avatars and you're probably mostly all using the same type of headsets and logic and all that jazz. Um, minus 44 is when we want to start rotating right. All right, so we want a condition, the HMD rotation, if it's less than minus 44. And then we want to go back to doing nothing. Um, we're going to kind of have like a little, you would think, well, maybe if it's greater than 44 or maybe it's greater than negative 44, but no, we, we want to, to give it kind of a, a buffer. So um, what I found was going to greater than minus 30. So that gave me a good like 15 degrees of rotation where I'll be rotating for about 15 degrees and then I'll stop. All right, so that's what we did for that side. And for the left side, we did positives. So um, we go left, condition uh, greater than positive 44, and we return 
for less than positive 30. Okay, so let's see what happens when we actually put on the headset. All right, there's not really much to see here, but as you can see, when I rotate right, I eventually rotate my body right, and then if I turn this back, it eventually puts me center, and if I keep going further left, it goes to the left turn. But eventually, this should stop automatically, because what's gonna happen is we are going to add an animation that actually rotates the body for us, and so those numbers will change on their own. I'm not gonna be turning and then turning back to stop it. No, it'll, it'll be doing it on its own. So we need to actually get an animation. Um, and so I, of course, went to Mixamo.com. All right, so Mixamo.com is being really slow right now. Um, to be fair, I do have like three Unity projects open. I'm in my garage. My Wi-Fi is probably not great. Um, so I just took the animations I needed from a different project um, and I exported them as a package. So I'm just going to import them as a package now. Uh, where did I export them to? I found them, went to my documents folder. All right, I just have two animations I'm importing. It's on the other screen, you can't see it. All right, but now if I go to my animator, I should have, well, let me make sure I don't need to work. Where did they go? There we go, left turn. Um, I think I'll be okay because I exported these without the avatars. I think I'll be all right. Let's see what happens. So if I go to my animator, go to my right turn and make this the right turn animation. And if I go left turn, make this the left turn animation. Um, also on our RPM avatar, um, always make sure you have root motion turned on. Otherwise your IK is not gonna work right. And whenever we actually start moving around the world, it's not gonna work right either. All right, let's see if that works. My fingers crossed. All right, so while this is loading, I just want to be clear that I went to Mixamo.com and I just searched um, like right turn and found a right turning animation and did the same thing with left turn. All right, so here I am. You can see in the animator that I'm not turning yet. Um, but if I take my headset and I turn to the left, there we go. Now my arms are still jacked, but that's because my controllers aren't moving. So um, let's see if we can make this a bit more uh, real for you. We'll put this on. Uh, now, I, you could probably with like, I imagine a, a, a solution like Final IK would make it to where your arms would never get jacked. But I, I, that's a pretty complicated tool and I haven't, I haven't learned how to do that yet. Um, I'm going to recenter. I'm going to let me uh, reset my view here. There we go, I'm not sure if that helped at all. All right, probably not because of the way I picked up my controllers. But now if I turn, if I turn around, let's stop playback and restart because uh, I think the issue was because I didn't have my controllers with me when I started. So now I'm facing forward, holding my controllers, and this should work. I don't see any reasons why it shouldn't. All right, the hands are in front of me. Um, Maybe it's just, it seems weird because I'm not looking dead on. Also, I'm sitting in a chair, so that's probably part of the problem too. All right. <clears throat> Might not be able to hear me because I'm gonna stand up. All right. So my, ah, I figured out my issue. It's because my body wasn't centered. All right, so you get, you get much better interactions and your arms don't go crazy. Uh, my arms are going a little crazy right now, um, but that's because I, uh, I don't have any logic to control what happens when I step too far out of my body. Um, so you can do that by setting up um, with your IK rig. You can set it up to where if your world position of your main camera gets to, like a certain distance from your hips, 
then you need to animate yourself forward somehow until those same way that we did these turning animations you can do something similar to make sure that your avatar always kind of stays with your hmd um but uh i'm gonna stop the video here even though it didn't look crisp here a lot of that had to do with i'm sitting down i'm sitting at my computer um but this is the logic that you would do so that if in the real world your player turns your avatar will keep up now you could get around that by just making your avatar um, um let me just save all this <laughs> Um, by making your avatar a child of, I guess your origin, would that work? If you make your RPM avatar, I don't think the avatar has a tracking space on it though. What would happen if we do that? Um, because traditionally with VR avatars, you know, you don't have legs necessarily or even arms. You might just have a torso and a head. And what you'd be doing is you'd basically be making your XR rig the parent. And so as you, you see, it's not, even though it's in the XR origin, um, normally what you would do is you would have your, your mesh as like a child of your camera. And then when you hit play, everything just moves with it. I don't know how this is going to work with our IK rig setup though. All right. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's like, we're going wherever the HMD is going. That's what's happening right now. So you could walk around your room. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I could technically be walking around my room and my avatar would move with me in the real world. But as you can see, there's a whole issue with the legs are kind of, if I, if I bend down to pick something up, my whole body does goofy things and I'm flying around. I don't even know if you can hear me. And so that's why that doesn't really work. Now you might be able to get clever and make that work somehow, um, but uh, you can see why we don't have our avatar as a child of our camera. Now, if we were doing a, a torso and head only, sure, we probably wouldn't have them be, um, we would probably just have it be a child of the camera. We don't have to do any of this IK setup and clever stuff, but we want it to get as realistic as possible. And that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here. <clears throat> what I'll do in the next video is we'll actually um, set up movements. So you can actually walk your character around while uh, other animations are still happening. We're going to be doing animator layers and whatnot. So that's what we'll be doing next. See you next time.